Hey everybody, welcome to Photo Blue, and today I'm going to show you how do you can do hand coloring with a program called Krita, which is a paint program that's open source and freely available. It's not as good a photo editor as say Photoshop or GIMP because it doesn't have some of the features that they have that are particularly for editing photos because it's a paint program. But the good thing about it is it has all of these different brushes and different things you can do with the brushes and the ways you can adjust the brushes. So if you want to do some hand painting of coloring uh, on a photograph, uh, that might, may be the way to go for you. Uh, a lot of people, what they do is they take an old color photograph that's kind of faded and the colors are messed up and they'll actually turn it to black and white and recolor it or re-add color into it uh, so the color is better. Uh, so what we can do is we can do a couple of different things in here, some which Photoshop can do and some which Photoshop cannot. We're going to use layers in here just as we would in Photoshop. In Photoshop, we would typically take a layer and then we would tint the color that we wanted in that layer and we would work with the opacity. We can do that with Krita as well, but what we're doing with Krita is where we're applying a color uh, to an area, whereas in Photoshop we would be typically working with the masks and masking. And it's, a, it's very similar, but it's a little bit easier to do certain things in Krita using uh, the same process. And there's also uh, s some other processes that we can use in Krita that may be useful. So let's start out here. I got this uh, photograph off of Pixabay because uh, it's black and white and it's uh, kind of a close-up of a face and I, I figured it would be a pretty good example and fairly easy one to do. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go up to layer and we're going to create a new paint layer. We're going to name this layer skin because we're going to use it for the skin. It's always a good idea when you're working with layers to name the layers so you know what they are if you have to go back or switch in between them while you're editing stuff because sometimes you work on one layer then another and have to go back and make some adjustments to the previous layer. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to settings and we're going to go to dockers and we're going to find palette down there. Now this is the default palette. You can actually make your own palette. And it's probably a good idea to do if you um, do this a lot you'll probably want to make your own sets of palettes with the colors that you really like and use a lot in them. Or you may even want to make separate palettes for different types of uh, photographs that you are um, coloring. So if we go down here to where it says default, we click on this and we scroll down. There's something called swatches. I kind of like the way this palette is organized and some of the colors in here. We can adjust them slightly if we need to. So that should work pretty good. So let's see if we can find something that's a pretty close skin color or good skin color. Now the thing I like about this is this is the advanced selector tool right up here. So once we get a color here, um, we can kind of adjust off of it, clicking on any one of these uh, tone or color either circles or bands down here or sliders uh, and as we create them or as we create new colors they, they appear up here so we can add them to our own palette if we want to but you need to remember to save it before you close out because these will disappear uh, once you restart the program so I'm gonna go and go with the color over here I think this is a pretty good color to start out with. I'm going to select the brush tool, which is over here, and then I'm going to go down here to select the brush I'm going to use. You can also actually right click and select a brush, uh, but I'm going to go down here and select it. And the next thing we want to do is, is the brush has its own opacity and its own size. We'll mainly be adjusting the size here. Since we're going to use a layer for the opacity, we're going to leave this at 100%. There's an advantage to that because 
the, the coloring will be even as we put it on or as we paint. If you're more experienced with using paint programs or if you want a little more uh, fine tuning, you can adjust the opacity on this too. And uh, when you overlap the brush strokes, you, you can actually gradiate things a little bit more. But we're going to start on the most simple way of doing it. There's this icon right here. We're going to click on this, and this is the brush properties. Now, right here, the mask type is on default, which is hard edge, really. So we want to soften that edge. And uh, we can actually test it here. That looks pretty good. But we can actually move, click on this um, line right here and move it up and down to change how hard or soft the line is. And if you look at the... Uh, if you look at the brush to the left, it, it's changing. So we're, we're going to leave it right about there. We can hit this to clear it again, and we can try it again. I think that's that, that's going to be pretty good to start off with, at least. So we're going to close that out. And uh, so now we have this brush. Now we can adjust the size, as I said. That's a little bit too small for what we're looking at right now. Let's bring it up a little bit to start off with. And we're going to brush some on here. And this is at full opacity, which is not what we want. So, uh, but, but the easiest way to adjust the opacity is to just paint a little blotch on full at first. And let's just bring it down until we find a spot where we really like it. Now we can adjust this a little bit later. I think we're going to stick with that. We can adjust it later. And in fact, you might want to uh, adjust it up a l just slightly more than you want it when you're doing the brushing so that you, you can see better where uh, you are actually uh, painting. Now the nice thing about uh, Krita is there's down in the bottom right corner there's a little slider bar, bar to adjust magnification which is really nice it makes it really easy to fine tune the magnification to the way that you want it also makes it very easy to zoom in and out Now here we might want to adjust the brush size. This is this bar that adjusts brush size is really nice because you can easily adjust it on the fly. All right, we're going to zoom out there. That looks pretty good for now. Uh, let's go ahead and and bring this down here. We could we could actually continue and and put all of this in skin tone right here or flesh tone right here, or we could leave that as black and white for effect. Uh, so right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, create another layer. another paint layer. We're going to name this layer Lips. And then we're going to try to uh, pick a color that we think would be good uh, for the lips. I'm going to go with that color. Uh, so let's zoom back in again. 
to the lips and let's bring this down just a skosh now once again we have a new layer here and so let's adjust the opacity All right, so you can adjust it as you want. That's that may be a, may need to really be feathered a little bit more, but you can go back and forth and adjust these uh, levels. And then the final thing is we'll create another uh, layer, new paint layer, and we will call that eyes. And then we'll want to uh, bring that probably fairly fairly far down. You probably want the opacity pretty low and, and, and to put some feathering in it. So if we would bring this back out again. So that looks pretty good. Um, at least as a demo uh, probably you'd want to spend a little bit more time on this make the edges a little less uh, obvious you might actually want to go down like say for instance to the lips and draw the opacity down even more uh, the more opacity there is and the more feathering on the edges the, the more natural it will will tend to look uh, we could adjust the skin level as well maybe we want it a little less Maybe you want it more subtle or to stand out more, just depending. Or maybe you even want to turn off the skin tone and just leave the lips or the eye or even just leave the eye as colored in like that. So you can do any of those combinations depending on what you want. Uh, now the other thing that you can do is you can create a layer if we create a new layer right here just just to show you create another paint layer and we're going to call this skin 2 and we're going to take uh, our skin color right here and we're going to bring the brush back up and we're going to actually leave the opacity for now at least to 100 percent and we're going to bring the brush opacity down so you can see here the brush is lighter but you can see as we overlap it gets darker so the more we do it the darker it gets until it gets to 100 percent opacity basically So that gives you some more flexibility to feather things out so you could start lighter and just move on darker. But that's a little difficult to do. You can get it, it could get very uneven. That way. You can also still use the opacity level. So that's a little more advanced technique and that's something if if you're you're better at um feathering things in and using brushes and paint programs. This gives you an idea of how you can uh, use Krita paint program to uh hand colorize photographs uh using layers, opacity of layers, brushes, opacity of brushes and different colors. This has been Photo Blue, and I'll see you soon. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like.